Hey guys. Um, so just uh, today, uh, we're excited. Five o'clock, we have our um, annual uh, Ohio State football clinic for the high school coaches, um, the state of Ohio, and, and some of the surrounding uh, states as well. And we're excited about it. We think it's going to be great. Uh, really excited that um, you know our staff will be there speaking, um, and uh, and then also tonight we'll have Bob Stoops uh, come in and speak um, to everybody here. Certainly has a, a great history and his family of, of Ohio football. So. Uh, very, very uh, excited and appreciative for him to come and, and speak to um, everybody tonight. And then tomorrow, uh, again, a lot of our, our coaches will be speaking. Eddie George will be speaking. Um, Zach Taylor from the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, and, uh, and so uh, we'll be recognizing a few people as well. Uh, Keith Byers and Bob Stoops will be honoring Dick LeBeau. Um, a few of the high school coaches in the area, Tom Lombardo and uh, Coach Reno. Um, and then... Um, yeah, I think that's it. So excited about that. Uh, just want to let you know that uh, you guys are more than welcome to be there, uh, to be uh, with us really for, for the clinic uh, over the next couple of days. And then for the spring game itself, um, we decided we're going to kind of go offense versus defense um, format for that. Um, we'll probably start off in a little bit of a thud and then quickly go into tackling. Um, and the majority of the game we will tackle in, in the spring game. Um, looking for a great crowd. Um, we are going to do a little bit of a a couple of things, um, you know, to tribute um, for Dwayne will be at the end of the first half. We'll do a video for him and a uh, moment of silence before and, and uh, still have a few other things that we're going to do to recognize him um, symbolically. So, um, except, you know, really excited about Saturday. We have a lot of great recruits coming in, a lot of uh, people coming in for this clinic. And, um, you know, it'd be nice to have Buckeye Nation together, um, you know, for, for this event on, on Saturday. Um, you know, to celebrate our team and, and the hard work we put in this spring, but also to get everybody together, um, you know, to, to honor Dwayne. And I think that's um, appropriate. And um, so it's, you know, there's going to be a lot of excitement, but also, you know, some, um, you know, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, moments in, in, the, in the day that will be uh, deep thoughts uh, based on, you know, just our memories with Dwayne and playing in that stadium. Um, so. Uh, excited about the weekend, and uh, any questions you guys have, we'll take. We'll open up uh, Burger Row Middle, Colin Gay Live. Hey, Ryan. Um, I'm curious, after the spring game ends, I'm curious about what you would want to see from Jim Knowles' defense. Kind of what's the expectation? What do you want to learn based on kind of like this in-game? Yeah, uh, you know, he's not going to uh, do a whole lot of his stuff uh, in, in this game. He's going to play. You know, our, it's going to be about fundamentals and running around with the, the football and playing hard. I mean, um, you know, I, we, we've seen throughout these first 13 practices, um, you know, just the, the, the multiple looks and the confidence and uh, how well these guys play and just how decisive they are out there. And I think that, that that's been done. Now, you know, get an opportunity to go play in, in, the, in the shoe and in front of a big crowd. I mean, it'll be very, very basic. And, um, but, you know, it's good for our guys to get in front of the crowd and play and have some fun and, and see some of the best players in the country. And a lot of the kind of conversation has been about how he's uh, installing nearly everything on his defense. And I'm, and I'm curious about what you've seen. Have you seen this kind of done before? Is this kind of normal? Or is this kind of like, you know, some just the fact that he wants to get everything on film? What, what's your opinion on that? How do you kind of respond to that? And do you think, feel like it's going to work? Like, or is it working? Right now? Uh, well, I, I think with our players, one thing that Jim would probably tell you is that He's been impressed with how um, professional they've been in terms of their preparation, being able to handle um, high levels of information. And because of that, you know, you're able to put a bunch of cut-ups together for the next couple of months to watch on film. And, and that's the idea. Um, first off, you've got to get fundamentally better. But when you're installing an offense or a defense, you want to try to get some of that stuff on film so you can teach off of the film over the next few months as you head into August. And so I think they've done that. I think they've put a bunch of that on film. And... I think, you know, we've all been impressed with how much they've been able to handle in the volume uh, while still playing with really good fundamentals. Uh, right next door, Dan Holt, the Warriors. Ryan, uh, Kai Stokes, Caden Curry were the first two freshmen to lose their black stripes. Just what have you seen that's impressed you from those two guys? Um, you know, Caden plays with a high motor. Um, he's a really good football player. Uh, plays a lot bigger than he is. Um, they're really intelligent, um, you know, quick twitch. I think he's going to be a heck of a football player. Kai Stokes, the first thing you notice is his smile and his attitude every day uh, is just excellent. It's just contagious. 
Uh, I mean, he's constantly just have you know a lot of energy, but on the field, athletically, um, he's got a really high ceiling. His movement is excellent. His range, uh, his ability to change direction, his ball skills, uh, covering skills. Um, you know, kind of see you know, he's tackled a little bit here, but we'll see how he tackles in the game. But um, so far, so good with those guys. For those young guys in particular, how important is the spring game in terms of an evaluation tool to see how they perform in that setting? Uh, I mean. You know what you see in practice, and typically, um, you know, early on they get a little nervous in the first time out there, but they settle back into their training, and that's what we always say. You always revert back to your training, and and when you're in environments like that with with high stress, but um, you know, it, it's rare that all of a sudden you get into the stadium and you start to see something that's completely different. That, that's happened before. Some guys struggle with that, and we try to help, but for the most part, you know, they're going to go back to how they are training themselves during practice. You know, when you put it out in the field. And we're calling it, you know, we call that competitive excellence. You know, so once you get out there, you're really able to do it. And the more you do it, the more confidence you can have when you're out there. And so, um, you know, I expect these guys to play with a lot of confidence out there and enjoy the day. Uh, second row left, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Um, given that you only have three healthy scholarship line of running backs this spring, was there any hesitancy with tackling? Just given that you. Yeah, and, and Caden Saunders is there as well. So we do have four. And, um, you know, we, we, did, we did some tackling, but. We also, you know, there's a, there's a fine balance there. But, you know, we, we've got, we, I think it's the right thing to do to tackle in this game and, and play the game. And, you know, we still have a lot of young guys that need to go out there and play football. So uh, we're going to do that. Um, early on, we'll have uh, a few plays and, you know, a couple series where we'll thud, but then we'll quickly get to that tackle. And obviously, uh, CJ and Jackson kind of speak for themselves and just keep improving. Um, but offensively, are there guys you want to see something from in the spring game? that maybe that lets you know that they're kind of ready to take that next step who aren't those and even throw Travion in there outside of those three? Uh, I, I think it's just good to get out there and play and just you know, see what we got. I I, um, I think that we, we're building depth. I think that there's guys who are going to have to step up when you lose, you know, two two first rounders on the, on the perimeter like that. That's significant when you lose, um, you know, Nick petit Ferrer uh, and, and Thayer Munford. Those, those are those are big, you know, four guys that you got to replace. Jeremy Rucker at tight end. So, um, you know, there's five. That's about half the offense that you got to replace. But I think the guys who have, um, you know, had the opportunity to step into those roles have done a nice job. And um, I just think this is just the next step in the journey that once we get to that first practice in August, that's practice 16. Uh, but anytime you go out there and play the game, it's, it's an opportunity for an evaluation. Yeah, Devin and Kyle, um, in the background, is there a way you want to split their reps up or is it just Kyle's reps too that Devin gets the three? Yeah, that's probably how we'll play it. But, um, you know, CJ won't play the whole game at, at with the ones either. You know, he'll, he'll play for sure. But we'll quickly start to roll those other guys and try to make it as equal as we can, just rolling them and, and trying to get as many reps as possible. And, the more, again, the more reps they get under their belt, the better, especially in, in, in the stadium. Front row middle, Dave Biddle, 24-7. Hi, Ryan. What has pleased you the most this spring? And on the flip side, what concerns you the most at this stage? <laughs> well, I think um, – the depth of the old line is, is a little bit of a concern. I think that, um, you know, a little bit of the depth at safety is a concern. Um, I've been pleased with, um, you know, the starters um, in terms of the offensive line and, and uh, some of the play there. But, uh, but we still have a little bit of work to do there. Um, I've been pleased with the defensive line and the depth that we have there. Um, the, the, some of the, the corners who have been competing every day in practice uh, have gotten better and better. I think that they've been really um, doing a great job. I've been very impressed with Tommy Eichenberg. I think he's really had a really good spring, playing fast, really decisive. Um, you know, I'll, I'll forget some guys, and somebody will be upset with me. But there's been some really good play across the board. And um, you know, we went through the whole, the entire roster yesterday and kind of talked and, and evaluated them as a staff. And there's been a lot of guys who have improved. So across the board. You know, we're in a much different place than we were last year just with our experience. And that combined with, um, you know, the new scheme on defense, it's, it's been a good spring. It's been exciting. It's been a challenge. Um, and, you know, guys are at different levels of their development. And then we're going to get a new group of guys that come in here in the summer. You know, three of them are offensive linemen. And we're gonna, those guys are going to have to come in and, you know, get going fast um, because we're going to have to con continue to build that depth because, you, know, you, you try to find five, then you try to find six, then you try to find seven. We got to find at least eight or nine that we feel good about putting in the game, which we did last year. We had that depth, and we were able to roll guys. And really, we've had that for a couple of years. When you think back, uh, I don't know if we have that right now coming out of the spring, and that that's a little bit of a concern. I'm going to ask about Josh Fry and a couple other guys that are banged up. Speaking of guys that are you know 
depth on the other line. I know you guys like Josh Fryer. I don't know how, how much you want to get into this, but is Josh Fryer expected back for camp for the start of season? And what about like Lathan Ransom, Marcus Crowley? Do you expect those guys will be back? Yeah, we expect uh, Lathan and, and Josh to be back this summer and ready to roll. Uh, Marcus is, is still, um, you know, we haven't really got into the details of that. And I, I got to check with Marcus and, and figure out where we're at with that. But um, that'll be a little bit more of a long-term deal. Um, and so we'll probably get more information out to you on that next time I get up here. I haven't thought of that, but we haven't talked about that publicly. But uh, his will be a little bit more of a long-term deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ryan, why are you going to go with a format of offense and defense kind of during Scarlet Gray drafting thing? Yeah, because I, I think that, um, you know, we're, we are a little light in the O-line. And so I think in order to, um, you know, keep it where we can roll guys in, in the depth and not running guys across the field and, um, you know, being more organized, I think it's a better way to control who's in the game. Also, it allows us to have a couple where we're going to do uh, some thud and not tackle early in the game. Um, and although it's not going to be scarlet and gray, we're still going to get just as many reps. Um, but it allows us to, you know, mix and match guys and, and have guys play for the offense and the defense. Where if it was scarlet and gray, we would need them to play on both sides of the ball. It just becomes logistically a little harder to manage. And uh, we talked to Josh Proctor uh, last week, as it was, and he's said he's ahead of schedule. Um, where do you see that, and what have you seen from him? I'm assuming he's not going to play in the spring, right? Yeah, I think he'll he'll probably do some of the stuff early on, but but he won't be tackling. Could you update his progress and what you've seen yeah. from him? I think physically he's getting there. Um, you know, uh, learning the the defense and mentally, and, and just there's a lot going on there. And if you're not getting those reps, like he wasn't the first really half of spring, um, you know, you, you kind of playing catch up, which he's doing a little bit. I mean, you obviously know his ability, but you know he's going to be have to be able to you know handle the amount of defense that we have in. And so, you know, because he missed the first half, he's still catching up a little bit there. But, but uh, I know the coaches and he will work really hard over the next couple months to catch up. Uh, Steve Wright, uh, Spencer Holbrook, Donovan Roll. Right. You talked a lot this spring about the offensive line and, and not having as many guys as you would like. Do you, do you feel like that's a, a development thing that you guys are behind in some of these guys that are coming along with development, or, or have you seen it in recruiting? Like, where do you think that the root of that issue? Is? Uh, I mean, it's probably a little bit of both, I guess. Um, but. You know, these a couple of the guys uh, that we were counting on to have big springs were out, so they just didn't get the reps, and that's a little bit more of a, of you know, injury than anything else. And um, you know, when you don't have uh, the full 15 practices of spring as an offensive lineman, it it hurts. You know, you just don't. But you know, nothing you can do about injuries. You just got to keep working through it. So uh, that combined with the, you know, three of the guys were coming in this summer. So I think as we get into the preseason, we'll feel a little bit better about that depth and have 16 guys on scholarship there. Um, but, but the development in that for those younger classes is going to be critically important to, to continue to build. Um, but, but, you know, I, I feel really good about, you know, six or seven of them, and we just got to keep building and try to get eight, nine. Uh, right. play or play Are quarterbacks off limits? Yes. So you don't tackle them? We don't. And was obviously your call to tackle? I, I'm a little bit surprised. Yeah. Well, I, I just think we need to play the game uh, this this year, and uh, we got to go out there and tackle and play. And um, I think it'd be good for our, a lot of our guys to do that, uh, get out there. And you know, the first game of the year we play Notre Dame at home, and that's uh, you know we got to be ready to roll. So um, you know, w once you get into the preseason, you start getting closer and closer to that first game. You know, you start to really hold your breath because you don't want to lose guys. But we also we we got to tackle. We got to play physical. We got to be tough. I mean, if we want to reach our goals this year, we're going to have to be that way. We're going to have to play that way. So um, so we'll do that in, on Saturday. Was your D coordinator on board, I assume? Yeah, that was good. I mean, he's been very good. He's, um, you know, we talked it out, and, and he was uh, he was definitely on board. Uh, front row right, Austin Ward, Letterman Rowe. Ryan, from start to near finish of spring camp, what has been the most competitive, must-watch one-on-one matchup? Um, there's been a lot. I think... Um, you know the, the the defensive ends against the t tackles have been have been good, and there's been um, you know wins on both sides. But that's you talk about making each other better. Those have been really good on the perimeter. You know I think uh, when you look at uh, you know the way that Denzel and Jordan and J.K. and, and Cam, um, you know two young guys are, are competing every day against our wideouts. I mean those are those are fistfights every day, and uh, 
you know, I, I think if you can get open against those guys, you're going to get open against a lot of guys in the conference. And if, if those guys can cover some of our wideouts, then that's a good sign for them. And that, that allows them to play with a lot of confidence. So those have been good. Um, I think when you look at the interior of Donovan, Luke, and Matt against some of our interior defensive linemen, there's been some battles there. Um, but it's been competitive. And guys are getting after it. And, and there's good energy on both sides. And um, so, no, I, th I think those are probably the ones where there was the best matchups. How, how often are the corners getting an edge on the wide receivers group? No, they're, they're, they're competing. They're doing a great job. They're getting their hands on balls. And um, it's back and forth. That's when you know it's a good, it's a good competition. You said a little bit of concern about depth at safety. That's obviously a place where you've lost a couple of people to the, the portal in the last week or so. Did those decisions surprise you? And um, I guess who does that leave as being critical stepping up in their wake? No, in terms of the depth, like we, we um, in terms of the number of safeties, we're way over there. Um, when I mean depth, I just mean guys who actually can get on the field and play. You know, Lathan's been out. Josh is just getting back in there. So we've had some guys who have been injured. Um, and so, you know, those guys have to get going. And then we have some younger guys. Sonny will be in here this summer, and Kai's getting his feet wet. So, um, you know, you, you, again, you want to try to find out who's the starter and then who's the backup, and then you kind of go from there. And so um, when I say depth, I mean guys that are game ready. And um, did last year's experience, because you, you didn't do tackling in the spring game last year, you just went cold for that. Right. Did that experience and then what happened with the defense in the fall affect your decision to go more tackling this year? No, no, I, I don't think so. I think it's just, you know, year in and year out, you, you look at your team and try to figure out who who needs to uh, get tackled, who needs to play, who needs to get, get a feel for playing in the stadium. Uh, and then also it's your depth. You know, I mean, how, how many guys do you have that you feel like you can, you know, you don't want to get, when you get into a situation where you, you can't get enough guys on the field. And so I think we're at a decent point right now where we can go out and, and scrimmage and tackle. Um, I think it's important. You know, the, it changes a little bit in terms of the way you play. You know, the, the angles you take, the speed you play with, and um, and I think it's it's good for our guys to do that. It's going to be healthy. Uh, front row right, Joey Coffin, welcome to the staff. Ryan, what would you like to see Kyle McCord and uh, Devin Brown get out of this game, and especially the chance to get some some work with the first team? Yeah, to just make the routine plays routinely and run the offense. You don't have to do anything extraordinary. Um, you know, we're not going to see a lot of. Uh, you know, crazy blitzes or anything like that. It's not going to be a challenge schematically. It's just going to be a matter of, um, you know, getting the snap, making the right read, delivering the football, handing the ball off, reading the right guy, and just managing the game. And, you know, being able to do that or not, locate the football, make the right reads, um, you know, in that type of environment, you know, uh, where you got, you know, probably half, you know, more than half of the whole stadium filled and it's going to feel like a game. And so you get an opportunity to see how they do in, with, with live bullets going on. Now, they're not getting tackled, but, Still, you get a feel for who's moving the offense. And you don't need to do much more than just make the routine plays routinely, especially with the players that we have. And Bonnie Hickson's a guy who's played a little more free safety this spring. What have, what have you thought of him in, in that role? I think Ronnie, um, first off, he's an excellent tackler. Um, and he just has a good feel for the game. He's totally bought into what's going on. I think his relationship with, with Perry is excellent. I think he really loves the, the defense that we're running. You really feel him out there in practice every day. and. I think if he continues to build over the next couple of months, he's got a chance to have a big year. Uh, right next door, Tim May, Letterman Rock. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ryan, is, is the quarterback situation now stacked almost ideally where you've got a guy that was a Heisman finalist last year, you've got a guy who started and won a game last year, and then you've got this the newcomer kid coming along and this talented, et cetera. I know you'd like to have one more guy in that room probably from a scholarship standpoint, but right. how has that shown up, I guess, in spring? That is, is that almost an ideal stacking? I mean, in today's day and age, I think it's it's pretty it's it's pretty healthy. Uh, we've been in a lot um, dicier situations than, than this, and as you know, it's always it's hard. It's, it's a delicate situation, but I feel really good about kind of where we're at in that room right now. I think the guys have the right mentality. They're developing. They're getting better every day, and their focus is not about how can, how quickly can I get on the field, Kyle and, and Devin. It's more about how do I develop to get better, so that when I do get on the field, I'm ready to go. Um, but it is good to know that Kyle's had some experience and. And now it's good to get Devin in here at mid-year and not come in in the summer, where at least he's got 15 practices under his belt. And the other thing, uh, uh, when you watch the defensive line, especially this year, this this spring, do they appear reinvigorated? I mean, uh, do you do you sense there's a force there that maybe wasn't last year? I mean, I know it's spring, and 
but what, what is your sense of where that group is? I it's think they took the tone for everything else. No, there's no question. Yeah, I mean, we have to we have to play strong up front. I think there's good depth there. I think that the the stuff that we're doing with with Jim um, allows them to play faster. Um, you know, they're going to have to continually work on uh, being consistent, but. Um, you know, when Larry's rolling his guys and, and they're playing fast with their pads down with a lot of confidence, they're, they're hard to block right now. And uh, I think we're, we're pretty deep. So that's good because we're going to need it throughout the season. Uh, but you're right. I mean, if we're going to be good on defense, it's going to start there. Is there one guy that's continually caught your eye in that group? I didn't mean to jump in there with one more question. But <laughs> is there one guy that's continually caught your eye? I mean, I, I, you know, th there's a bunch of them that have. And again, if I say one, then, you know, someone's going to feel slighted. But I think as a, as a group, uh, they've done a really good job this spring. Yeah. Third or right, uh, Doug Langley, Cleveland.com. Ryan, do you think that a team scrimmage like this is the best way to end spring practice? Or would you be open to the idea if college football went to it someday of maybe playing like an FCS opponent? Or something like that in the spring. I mean, I, th I think it's definitely worth a conversation. Um, you know, especially for your young players. I, th I don't think it's it's out of the question to at least bring up to see if you know, um, you know, work through the issues. You know, I haven't quite thought it through. I heard somebody bring it up the other day and kind of caught my attention, but haven't quite th thought through all the details. But I think it's definitely worth talking about. You've used the word decisive a couple times, I think, in talking about defensive guys. Uh, how important is that? How, how have you seen that different this spring in terms of feels like you're saying yeah. guys know what they see and they're doing it? Yeah, I, I, I didn't realize I, I kept bringing that word up, but I think it's right. And I think that's what happens when you're into your second or third year of playing and you have a lot more experience is that uh, you're more confident out there. You move faster. You see it. You're not second guessing yourself. You're not tentative. And I, I think I see that across the board just in general. Uh, certainly on defense. They're just playing faster. They know what, what's going on. I think they're doing a good job of getting extra work in. And when, you're know, when you know what you're doing and you're able to anticipate as opposed to react, that's, to me, the difference of really good play. And, um, and I think the more experience you have, the more you can anticipate what's about to happen as opposed to react. And very specific question on a guy. We know spring games sometimes is a shot for some guys who don't normally get on the field. Sammy Wigless is a guy who's been in the receiver room for a long time. What's a walk-on like that who's been around? What's he do for that room? I, I got a tremendous amount of respect for Sam. Um, comes to work every day. He's tough. Um, I mean, he, he's he's a good receiver. And, um, you know, he's, he's his attitude's excellent. Um, I mean, he, he's somebody that I think, you know, some of the other receivers go to a little bit just for, you know, advice on things. He's very smart. Um, you know, similar to C.J. Saunders, you know, kind of from that same mold of, you know, coming in as a walk-on, kind of an H receiver, um, really good in short areas, quick, reliable, tough, and um, and really good makeup and attitude. So, um, you know, we're very fortunate to have him as a Buckeye. And final question, second row left, Bill Landis, The Athletic. Yeah, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe in the times we've been out to practice, I've seen uh, Noah Ruggles there. Is he with you guys, or is he going to be rejoining you in the summer? Like, what's, what's the yeah. situation? Yeah, so he, he's uh, he's not with us right now, but he'll be rejoining us this summer. Yeah. It seemed like he was in Hawaii and kind of like living the dream. I didn't know if he was like doing his job semester. Or something. Oh, we have to make sure he gets back here. <laughs> um, uh, Jaden Ballard is a guy whose name's come up quite a bit, and I, we've not seen a ton of him, but I imagine he'll get some opportunities on Saturday. Just what's his spring been like in the defensive end together? Yeah, I thought it was important for Jaden to have a big spring. I think he's had a good spring. I think he's really flashed. I think his potential is in ceiling is, is really high. Uh, he's got to keep growing and keep building and learning um, you know, his body. I think he's, he told me today he's 6'3", 195, you know, and uh, that's a big receiver. And he's, he's just got to learn to play that big because his um, ball skills down the field, his ability to catch a jump ball, um, he can really run too. So he's a, he's a legitimate deep threat. Um, and he's just got to keep building and growing. You know, he's only kind of been doing this for a few years. He was a basketball player growing up. I think the first time he played maybe was his freshman year in high school. And so um, he hasn't played a ton, but uh, the skill set's there, the ceiling's there. Um, we just want to see him take that next step, which we've seen flashes of this spring. And, and uh, I have one front row uh, left, Steve Hellwagner, 24 7. Coach, the Steelers came out. Uh, I believe like they're going to have a service next Friday. i uh, just curious if you're – planning to attend that if there'll be an Ohio State contingent going over for that or if you have any ideas or plans of going to see his family in person otherwise or just what you can tell us I guess maybe about 
Yeah, we're going to try to get through this weekend right now and just kind of get get through the spring game with all these recruits and everything going on. But, um, you know, starting to learn a little bit of what the plan is for next weekend. And, and certainly we want to attend as many of those things as we can.